How's it, John here? In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Unity's 3D Wheel Collider. Haven't you forgotten something? Oh yeah, and my dad's joining to cause some trouble. <laughs> okay, what the devil is that strange thing you've got there? So I modeled this tractor in Blender, as you see. So this is our vehicle for the wheel collider. So it is quite a nice example. We have two different types of wheels. We have a quite smaller one and we have two larger ones. Okay. And how long did it take you to do this strange toy like tractor? You modeled this yourself quickly. Yeah. Because I think that uh, your blender skills have, uh, have kind of decreased in ability. You have Definitely, yeah. I mean, if this is the kind of stuff you're doing now, it's pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm just teasing you. Okay, it's not too bad. How long did it take you to do this? I think a bit more than an hour. Oh, okay, I suppose that's pretty good. Okay, so what do you want to do now? Are you going to export this, import this? Yes, I'm going to show you first how to export to Unity. So what I'll do is I won't just export the whole tractor as one single model. Instead, I'll export it as uh, three different models. I'll export the body, as you see here, our front wheel, and one of the rear wheels. Why do you do that? And why do you need to do that? The reason why is because uh, we can't just export them as one model because we want them separate. And also, if we have, we probably could export as one model. And in testing, I did try. However, what happened is the wheel collider broke because the wheel uh, seemed to have kind of uh, weirdly merged with the body. Okay, okay, let's move on then. Let's hit it. Okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. This is great. This is Blender. That's fine. But let's see the, the end results. Can you yeah. just show me that quickly? Okay, let's load Unity. Well, that looks pretty interesting. I see you've got some kind of terrain going on there. Yeah, I just quickly added a terrain and a camera controller. So as you see, our tractor can uh, drive around. It ha it's quite dynamic, the script, so we can change the acceleration and the brake force. And for some reason, it's a bit of a drift of the tractor, but... Wow, I love the physics on that. It looks mm. so awesome. Wow. And your export is um, on the tractor. It looks fantastic from Blender. It just shows yeah. you that uh, Blender is... Uh, is a great product to build 3D, um, 3D stuff. And then you can export it and, and import it from into uh, Unity and actually... Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I love it. I think it's freaking awesome. Um, mm. It looks exciting. You can, I can just imagine a really cool um, game. You, you're a farmer, you wanna go and um, plow some fields or you just want to go in for a really nice uh, Sunday drive. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so there's nice physics. Yes, as well as Unity's physics is. Not I sure mean, how I can it is, but yeah. I can imagine like if you put some really cool ground, uh, like some nice, um, really interesting terrain, um, some pebbles, and then it spins the pebbles using the particle system maybe. Um, you know, yeah, something like that. What yeah. do you think about it? What's your... Yeah, that's probably quite easily possible. I mean, this was just a little demo I made, but yeah. Okay. You could probably expand this quite... Uh, okay, so possibly. anyway, let's get going then. Let's, uh, you can show people how you did this and what the script's involved and all the other stuff. Whee! Yes. Awesome. That's great fun. Wow. Mm. Anyway, okay, go for it. Yeah, let's get started. Okay, I made a new Unity project for our... Uh, Tractor. So uh, let's just uh, create a few folders uh, before we export the tractor to Blender. I'm going to make a folder called Models, which will hold our tractor. A folder called Scripts, which will hold our vehicle scripts. And then uh, one more folder called Materials, which will hold all our tractor's materials. Okay, now let's just open up Blender. Okay, I'm in Blender now, so uh, let's export these uh, models to Unity. So we have the body, the front wheel, and uh, two rear wheels. We'll only have to export one rear wheel though, because uh, in Unity we can just flip it. 
Okay, so let's just select our body. We are going to uh, go File, Export, and we're going to export it as an FBX. Okay, I just moved it to my Assets folder of our uh, Wheel Collide of uh, my uh, project, my Unity project. And we're going to open up our Models folder. And in Models, we're going to have Body.FBX, and we're going to apply Transform. And make sure it's include is limit to selected objects. And export as FBX. There we go. Now, let's do the same for the front wheel. However, I'm going to duplicate front wheel. Okay. There we go. And I'm going to go, uh, uh, let's just go tab, as, uh, go A to select everything, and change the median, uh, sorry, uh, change the median to zero. And it'll just move it to the center. Okay. So now we can just do the same uh, thing and export it. Okay. And let's rename it from body to front wheel. Okay, selected objects and apply transform and export. And then finally, uh, rear wheel and just select choose one. Okay, so there we go. Let's just go shift D and there we go. Let's just move it to zero position. Go A in edit mode and change the median to zero. There we go. And we have a, a rear wheel. And let's just export it. Okay, I just exported it. Now let's go to Unity. Okay, I just exported the models. And as you see, we have them right here. So uh, if we just drag in our body, let's say, uh, as you see, let's just, uh, before we touch anything, let's create a new prefab, a new empty, sorry. And let's name this tractor. Okay, and put a body in tractor. Now you may notice something that the uh, some of the colors don't look the same as they did in Blender, and that's because in Blender I changed uh, stuff like metallic, and they don't uh, export uh, to Unity. And you may think uh, we have these materials here, we can just edit them, but we can't. They're all locked. The reason why is because those materials are part of the model. And we need to remove them from the model. So what you can do is select the materials from our model, uh, uh, Command C and Command V, and they'll go outside the model. So we have blue, black, gray, and red. Okay. Now if we select our body, we can change black from uh, none, which will automatically get the black from here, to our black. So we'll have black, blue, gray, and red. There we go. Okay, and as you see, if we open up, now we just have the mesh. And I'll do the same thing uh, to the front wheel and the back and the rear wheel. However, instead of, uh, remo of duplicating these materials, I'll just select these ones. Okay, now let I'll just do this uh, to the other wheels. Okay, I've uh, finished. Now let's select all our materials and move them into my materials folder. Okay, good. Now, if we select these, you can see this uh, our smoothness, uh, which was exported, but we also have metallic. Now, if we can, I can just change these, and I'll just change it to what I want, and I'll be back when I've done. Okay, I've just changed up the values as you see here. Here are the values if you want to copy them down. Okay, now let's go to models. Now we need to use our front uh, wheel and our rear wheel. So I'm going to select both and just drag them into my tractor uh, empty. Okay, there we go. As you see, they're down here. We can also just move the body. The body seems to be in a weird position. Good. Now it's in zero position. So now uh, we have our front wheel. However, this is the object. Uh, this is not going to be the object we're going to add our uh, wheel collider to. 
Instead, this is going to be the mesh object, which is going to have our materials and, of course, our mesh. So I'm going to rename this to front wheel mesh and wheel, rear wheel mesh. There we go. Okay. And are we going to add an empty to both the wheels? Okay. And I'm just going to make sure they're all at zero. And this, uh, the empties are going to be called rear wheel. Okay. And then we can also have, I remember, I think this was right. And we'll have front wheel. Okay. There we go. Okay. So now we have the mesh and the empty object that's going to hold our collider. Okay, so the reason why, by the way, we don't have to export two rear wheels, rear wheel left and right, is because that we can just flip it, this object, if we want it on the right or the left, let's say. So I can duplicate rear wheel uh, right and rename it to rear wheel left. And I'll make the rear wheel mesh and just flip it like that. And if we just move it, as you see, it's a perfect flip. Okay, so now I'll just position the parents of the mesh to the correct position and just slide it on the axle. So all I do is something like this. And I just slide it in until it fits. Okay, and I'll be back when I've done that to all the wheels. Okay, I just put in the values. So if you want to copy these down, here are the values. Here's the front wheel and the left rear. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is on all the wheels, I'm just going to select them all and add a wheel collider. We also have a wheel joints, a 2D, but you don't need to worry about that. Okay. So next, uh, I'm going to set the, uh, I'm going to go to our tractor, quick, and I'm going to add a box collider, and I'm just going to make this as uh, the size you want. So you can make this any size you want it, whether you're using a car or like me, a tractor, just make sure it fits the vehicle. Okay, and there we go. Perfect. Okay, as long as it roughly fits the vehicle. Next, I'm going to add a rigid body and make the mass a bit heavier. I'm not sure what uh, units uh, uh, Unity is using, but if there's in kilograms, then it'll be about two tons, which I think, which uh, through testing, I found is quite a nice value. Next, I'm going to make a, a let's just select our uh, rear wheels. Okay, there we go. So we have two rear wheels, and as you see, uh, you can see this uh, a green outline, and that is our wheel collider. How uh, the problem is though, we need to make sure this fits it. So uh, we can change the center, which is where the collider is. Found a nice value is zero point one five to fit this wheel, and then of course the radius. Now, we really want to make sure this fits the wheel as well as you can. This seems to be a nice scale, 20. Okay. So as long as it fits the wheel, then it's perfect. We can do the same to the right. Okay. So that is about 0 0.92. Okay, and 0 0.15. Perfect, and it fits it quite nicely. The next, uh, you have a couple more settings, like the mass. I'm going to make that 600 for the rear wheels. And then for the front wheel, I'm going to make that uh, 300. Okay, let's actually make it 200, 200 let's say. Okay, so you may think because uh, the, the front wheel was two wheels, you'd make it two wheel colliders, but if you think about it, it's only really one wheel because they only rotate as one type of wheel. 
so there'd be one wheel for it. Okay, I'm going to make the y 0 0.15 again, uh, 0 0.16, uh, let's go 5. And let's make the radius a bit smaller. So you want to make sure this fits it. Okay, uh, let's actually change it to orthographic. Let's make this 2D mode. Oh, pity it's in the front. Okay, let's not worry about that. Just make sure it fits the wheel. That's all that really matters. Maybe make the radius a bit smaller, 4, 1, let's say. Okay, I think that fits nicely. And it may be 1, 6. Okay. We really just want to make sure it fits nicely. Yeah, I think that actually works really nicely. So, wheel. Good. Okay. So, the next thing we want to do is we need to add a plane, just uh, something so our tractor can ride on. Let's just use a plane and make it 100 in scale. We can change this out in a second, a bit later. Let's make our tractor float a bit so it can fall down. Okay, and I'm going to, if, if we just press play, it should just fall down. Okay, good. It seems our uh, front wheel is floating a bit. Let's change that. Okay. You just really want to make sure it works. So let's say 0 0.9, uh, 0 0.85, let's say. Okay, we just re I'll just make uh, this fit. Oh, our tractor fell over and there you can see Unity's physics. So I'll just uh, set this uh, the front wheel to a good value. Okay, I found a nice value. It is 0 0.16. So if we press play, as you see, it falls. But it will, after a couple of seconds, it will also roll over. And I'll show you how to fix that in a moment, in a bit. So first, let's, uh, let's just make a new script. So we're going to go to scripts. And I'm going to name my script vehicle. Okay. Okay, good. And I'm going to attach it to my tractor. There we go. And let's just open up in Visual Studio. Okay, I'm going to make another script. Okay, and I'm going to name this wheel. Okay, there we go, and wheel, good. Now I'm going to make this system.serializable, and I'm going to make this a, a, a list that we can use, so we can add, uh, so we can have as many wheels as we want. So if you let have a truck that would probably have more wheels than our tractor, then you could just add in a new wheel. Okay. So now, if we just uh, get rid of everything in our vehicle, I'm going to make a public, okay, to make a list of our wheel, okay, and we're going to name this wheels, which is equal to a new list wheel, good. Okay, now I'm going to have a float, and it's going to be acceleration which is equal to 50 and uh, remember when our tractor ke uh, kept falling over well we're going to fix that by changing the center of mass so we're just going to set that to a bit below the ground a bit underground so they won't roll over as much so let's have a public vector 3 and let's name the com is equal to a new vector 3, uh, 0, and let's say negative 5, and 0 again. Good. Okay. Okay, make a couple more floats, and this is going to be for all our uh, acceleration values and stuff like that. So we're going to have current acceleration. Okay, it's equal to 0. Go have another private float. Current break force okay which is equal to zero private float 
current turn angle. Okay, let's just keep them in one little section. There we go. Current turn angle. And uh, there we go. Next, we're going to have acceleration. We're going to have, uh, let's not make that 50, let's say 500. We're going to have uh, a, turn, a max turn angle. Okay, and let's make that 30. Okay, there's going to be a float. And then one more for brake force. Good. And let's make that, let's say 500 again. Okay. I'm going to have two more lists. I'm going to have a public. It's going to be the same as wheels. Let's just do that. And there's going to be steering wheel. Okay, steering wheels. Whoops, I spoke that wrong. There we go. Steering wheels. And I'm going to have driving wheels. Because each wheel, I'll have two balls. It can either steer it can, or, and it can drive. So driving will basically... Uh, it's kind of make like you could have a four-wheel drive, or uh, in this case, a three-wheel drive tractor if you wanted. Or you could have certain wheels turn, certain wheels uh, just drive. And this will help us do that. Okay, I'm going to have a start method. And this start method, I'm just going to go get component. And I'm going to get rigid body dot center of mass is equal to com center of mass of course and this will actually change the center of mass and override the center of mass from what it generated for us so if i just went to unity quick okay and i just press play it should not roll over and as you see it isn't rolling over Okay, good. And you could of course make it a high center of mass, which would, wouldn't help making it fall over, that's for sure. But yeah, and it also can do weird stuff to the physics, but as you see, it falls over. Yeah. Oh, and it uh, kind of breaks the physics a bit by manipulating the center of mass. Okay, let's just make that negative five again. And as you see, we have wheels. If we add a plus, Obviously, it, do, it doesn't do anything because we need to uh, set wheel. But yeah, as you see, there's how we do it. If we go back to our Visual Studio now, by the way, I accidentally made these public. These should be private. Okay, I'm actually going to open my wheel script now. And our wheel script is going to contain a couple things. It's going to contain a wheel collider. Uh, there we go. It's going to have a public transform for the mesh. And two public bools can steer. Okay. And a public bool can drive. There we go. Okay. And next I'm going to have a public void on my wheel. Okay, and it's going to be called update wheel. We're not going to use this for quite a while, but essentially this is going to uh, make it so that a wheel can actually visually turn. So we're going to have a vector three position and a quaternion for rotation. And I'm going to have wheel collider dot get dot get world pause. Okay. And we're going to have out. By the way, uh, what out does is it makes it so that we don't have to, let's say, uh, go like position is equal to. It will automatically set it for us. So out position and out rotation. And I'll have mesh dot position is equal to position and mesh dot rotation is equal to rotation. There we go. 
Now let's open vehicle again. Okay, so let's set out steering wheels and driving wheels. I'm going to have a for each loop and, and this is going to be for each wheel, okay? For each wheel in wheels, it's going to loop through all the wheels in the wheel, in wheels and if the wheel dots can steer, okay? It's true. By the way, you don't have to go equals equals to true because if you just leave it like that, it'll automatically uh, say true if it's true. Okay, so if wheel can steer, then steering, steering wheels dot add and add wheel. I'm going to copy and paste this exact thing for our, uh, instead of wheel or can steer though, it's can drive. Okay, and this will be driving wheels. Next, I'm going to add a fixed update. Okay, let's just make this a private void fixed update. Good. I'm going to see current acceleration, which is whether we're pressing the W key or the S key, is equal to our acceleration okay times by uh, input dots uh, get access and we're going to get vertical which is going to be uh, pressing the WS key or the up and uh, down arrow and what's great about input dot get access is that if it has a nice uh, linear line of if we're pressing W or go slowly up to one, it won't just instantly set to one, which is really nice. And so give us a smooth acceleration upwards. Vertical and horizontal. Oops, I spoke that wrong. Oops, okay, let's just fix that, good. And this will be max turn angle and so current acceleration, it will be current turn angle. Next, I will have if input dot get key, okay? And this will be if we're holding it uh, down. If it's just get key down, then it's just if we're pressing it. Get key, though, is if we're holding it. Key code dot space, or wherever your break key is, okay? And we're going to set that to our current uh, brake force. There we go. Current brake force is equal to brake force. Else, okay, current brake force is equal to zero. Okay. We're going to have a for each loop. And it is going to go through all the wheel. It's going to get all the wheels in driving wheels. So it's going to go through all the driving wheels and what it's going to do is it's going to get the wheel dot wheel collider okay dot motor torque okay which is how fast it's turning is equal to current acceleration. There we go. Now you copy and paste this two more times okay and this is going to be driving wheels it's just going to loop through wheels and this is going to be for brake torque is equal to uh, course current brake force and the exact same thing basically as current turn angle in steering wheels. There we go. So if we just open this up in unity now, okay, obviously nothing will happen if we just press play. We need to add uh, three elements here. Whoops, and I forgot. You must make wheel, uh, remove the mono behavior of it. Okay, now let's go to Unity. Okay, if we, uh, I've added three wheels. Let's select our uh, rear wheel right. Okay, and left, and our uh, front one, of course. Okay, and our front wheel. So uh, our rear wheel, I'm going to have it, the rear wheels can drive and the front wheel can steer, okay? Next, I'm going to set the mesh 
So a rear wheel right, okay, and rear wheel left, I'm sure they correct. And then of course front wheel, okay. If we just press play and we press W, okay, it's moving but in the wrong direction. Okay, I'm just going to change the acceleration. Let's just make this a thousand, let's say, and negative a thousand. And brake force, let's make that also a thousand, though. Okay. Okay, if we just drive. And let's just go to cut it open and see the scene view. It's, it is actually sort of working. The steering is broken, so we'll have to check that. But the movement is actually working. We can brake and we can reverse by holding down S. And as you see, it will reverse. Okay, now let's go to the scripts and just fix some of those problems. Okay, so if we just scroll down Okay, it seems that I've done something uh, really strange. I've changed the motor torque to the current turn angle. We want to change the t uh, steering angle to current turn angle. There we go, that's what was wrong. Okay, so if we now go to Unity, okay, I'm in Unity now, and as you see, our tractor can steer. But you may have noticed a rather big problem. Steering doesn't turn the wheel and the back wheel isn't uh, moving. So it just looks like it's just kind of sliding about. And I'll fix that now. So if we just open up our script, okay, I'm going to do a for each, each wheel in wheels. And uh, if we just go here, Okay, in wheels, and I may as well actually put this in uh, where we put our brake torque because it's a convenient place. Uh, we could just what we have to do is go wheel, okay, dot update wheel, and our wheel we just setting it to our uh, world position. Okay, now if we go to Unity, okay, and if we press play, this should work. So, yes, as you see, the wheels are now uh, moving. And, as you see, the back wheel is actually turning now. So, if we just brake and move it backwards, move it in reverse, yeah. So, you may notice something a bit strange. The front wheel actually has some, uh, if we press play again, you may notice the front wheel has a bit of suspension and it looks quite strange. So I'm going to show you how to uh, disable suspension. If we go to front wheel, uh, click F to focus on it, we have suspension distance. All we have to do is make that zero, and it's now moved it out of place. Okay, now let's just move it in the correct position. So let's say uh, zero five. Uh, let's just move it a bit lower even. Okay, just zero is a nice place, it seems. Good. And as you see, the front wheel has no suspension. And it actually works really nicely. So you may also notice that the tractor is leaning quite dangerously. And, um, and it seems like if you turned it too much, it would do that. Where it would like really like fall over almost. Even though somehow it always manages to right itself. Probably because the sense of mass we manipulated. But if we go to tractor, we can change the sense of mass. So let's say negative 100. So it is really low down. And if we press play, as you see, it is not going to turn at all. Just uh, And it seems more realistic that this kind of tractor would just... It seems not very realistic if it just like uh, wobbles or even turns over. So we're going to make it like this. There we go. And as you see, we have some cool look looking drifting almost. Okay, so, 
So I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, then please leave it a like. Otherwise, see you in the next video.